All right, so on the screen here, I have uh, Modus open. Uh, we have a program open, no model yet, but we're going to run through all that. Um, as we get started here, you'll see some prompts come up, and I'm going to start stop at a certain point to show you some stuff. So I have this little program here that I made that lets me select some bolt holes that I want to inspect, uh, and which sections on which blades I might want to inspect. I'm going to select a couple here, and we're going to stop. And what that program did is it actually wrote out a uh, DMI file. So it's a, it's a file that Modus uses for its programming. Um, and the great thing about Modus is that because it is text-based, you can do stuff like this, where you write out a bunch of variables to a file and specify what you want inspected. So this executes very quickly. Um, and as we get running, we'll step through some stuff and you'll see how that file affected the execution. We're going to run through the alignment. Uh, it's going to measure, do a rough check, ask you to line up the part, and then measure the datum faces. And now we're going to go measure the bolt holes. So this is where this that file came in. Um, right now, it's going to loop through. It knows how many bolt holes there are from the file. And it's going to see if it was selected. So it's going to keep looping through until one of them was until one of the selected bolt holes comes up. And then it's just going to go over and measure the hole. So it's going to do this for every one that we inspected. So you're going to see it skip around the part instead of measuring each one individually. And it output each characteristic uh, for the specified hole with, a, with the correct number for the bolt hole. Uh, then we're going to move into the BLISC inspection, the actual airfoil inspection itself. So we're going to loop through, same kind of thing. It's going to see if we hold it to measure that blade. And we're going to show you some a few different measurement techniques. So the first technique here is a regular cross-section scan. So it's going to go and just do just measure the cross-section. Um, you know, just a regular cross section. We'll step through all these. And then it's going to go through and analyze each cross section. Takes a couple seconds. Um, and, you know, you don't want your machine stopping. So there is a way to actually have that run in a separate modus thread to, um, to process that so that you can move on to the next inspection. And I'm going to open up a report here. Oh, I can save it, so we'll move on. Um, the next thing we're going to do is a blade sweep, where it actually sweeps the blade. And it's going kind of fast because it's offline. Um, but this will actually sweep the whole blade, give you a full 3D surface uh, that can be used for reverse engineering. It can be used for, um, is really great for when you have a, a defect in your blade. A uh, company I worked for before had a cutter explode and just gouged up a whole side of the blade. And Arrow wanted the wanted to know as much information they could about the hole that was basically put in the blade. Uh, so this would have been a great option for that. Uh, after it's done sweeping, you can go through and you can slice it and report traditional cross sections, just like you would um, with any other kind of inspection for an airfoil. And the, the finally, the last thing option here is a uh, a method where it sweeps the lead edge, and it does regular cross section scans on the sides. You can see it doing the cross sections. And then it's going to go and measure the lead and trail edge with a sweep scan. I'm getting these errors because we're offline. All right, and now you might think that oh, oh wow, that sweep scanning is going to be hard to uh, hard to program. It's it's actually not hard to program at all. So with the Modus planning suite, they give you options to do patch scans, uh, the airfoil inspection with the sweep scans, 
um, regular cross-section scans. And it's great because it does a lot of the work for you. So you see here, I have a blade selected. So all I have to do is hit generate sweeps. And based on some of the settings that were in the, um, that are set up beforehand, it will generate a bunch of patches on the face. Show you what that looks like when it's done. Yeah. So all these blue arrows are where it's going to sweep. All the lines are the different cross sections that it uses when it does its calculation. It takes about seven, 10 minutes for it to actually calculate everything. Uh, so I'm not going to make you sit through that. But over here, I actually have it already planned for you so you can see it run. Uh, you can simulate it to see what it's going to do. And you'll see it generates these nice sweep scans on the lead and trail edge, uh, concave and convex sides, and then they all get merged together. Kind of fast forward through this a little bit. And then as far as the you know option to sweep the lead edges and do the individual cross-section scans, the advantage of this over the sweep scans is that it's a little bit more time efficient because uh, you're not sweeping the whole blade. We'll simulate this one. Now, Ben, while that's running, these yeah. look like two very different softwares. But what you're saying is that this planning suite that we're looking at right now has the ability to output all of the code that we need to then go over to Modus and run the scan paths like we saw in the previous software, correct? Correct. So at the after you're done planning everything, you make sure everything's going to run fine. Uh, you create an execution sequence. You drop everything over and you hit output, and it creates a DMI file that you can either copy into your program, or you can call it with an external call uh, as a subroutine. Uh, so there's there's no extra work once it's done, it's just save the file and call it from your program. Uh, and then as far as for traditional cross-section scans, the there's a new option, uh, and it's, this works not just for airfoils, but for any part of the uh, of your of your part, I guess. Uh, so it's as easy as clicking a couple points. That one smaller, uh, and adding add as many as you need to. So you can see here that it generated some curves. And then you hit plan. And this, again, this takes a few minutes to go through. Uh, so I have one prepared. Did have one prepared. Um, but it's the same thing, it outputs the paths. So th those are the paths that you saw me run initially. Um, Right here. So this is actually going to step through to the next blade because I told it to skip to a different one. So now we're way over here on the side. Uh, another great thing about the Revo is once you program uh, a path for a blade, you can use that on all of your blades just by rotating your align. Uh, the way the Revo head works is the vector of the tool is based on the active alignment relative to the Z axis. Uh, so all you have to do is rotate your alignment and you have your next blade program. Um, it's really fast. It's great for, um, it's great for taking care of all the hard work for you. I, so I think that's just about all I have. That's great, Ben. And, and I touched on this a little bit, but speak a little bit more for me about the calibration, because obviously we're looking at this list, and you just said that all the angles and everything automatically align. 
but uh, there's a lot of angles there with all those different blades. So does that mean that I have to sit there and calibrate for hours on end to make sure that every, every single one of those blades can be inspected? Or uh, how does that work? Oh, no, the, the, the probe calibration is as simple as uh, right-clicking on the tool in your UCC server. We have open right here. Uh, you, you go to your tools list, and you find zero, 00 in your list. Right click and hit requalify, and that calibrates every single angle. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, depending on if it's been calibrated before. Uh, but after that, every angle has been calibrated. And how often do you uh, recommend that people requalify the tool? Because, you know, obviously, if I'm just using a, a you know, a90, B90 kind of probe or something for my traditional three axis inspection, you know, that may only take, um, you know, 10 or 15 seconds or so maybe to uh, to inspect. So if I have to requalify this whole head, is that something I have to do every hour or is it uh, less significant than that? Oh, it's definitely less significant. Um, it, it really depends on your environment. I've seen places do it every eight hours. I've seen people do it every 24 hours. Um, it's definitely not something that has to be done every hour, though. Good. Uh, well, that definitely uh, cuts down on some time there if it's uh, only 20 minutes for the whole head and it's only every day or so. Right. So with that uh, being said, I have a couple other uh, couple other comments coming in here, but if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the chat box as we continue on here. We have a couple more minutes to open up the floor. Uh, one thing I did want to talk to you about, Ben, as well, is I noticed up in the top of uh, MODIS, there is a button for surface finish. So yes. is, it may be a little hard to simulate offline because I know you're not on an actual machine, but uh, talk to us a little bit about the surface finish in MODIS, if you would. Yeah, so surface finish is handled by, uh, with a, with a, Surface Finish Probe. It's a tactile skidded probe, and it is actually pretty easy to program. Uh, it, basically, you click on, you click a line, and you tell it which which C angle to use, um, and it can output RA, RZ. They actually just added a couple more options. Um, so they're they're always updating it. It has a mo the Revo two has a motorized C axis, which is great uh, because on the Revo Revo one you had to uh, go back to the rack every time, which which you know which which could be kind of a problem. Um, so so th so that's great. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a probe set up right now. Otherwise, I'd show you how easy it is to program. But it is just a couple button clicks. Uh, say, here's a line I want to inspect, and it's pretty easy. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've seen a couple demos of it, and it definitely looks uh, like it's a very flexible uh, tool. Do you find from your aerospace background that you guys do a lot of surface finish uh, traditionally on blades and that kind of thing? Or is it kind of a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the specs? So the company I used to work for had uh, quite a spec for airfoil surface finish. You had to do flow, flow direction, cross flow direction, uh, a certain number of places on each side. To have somebody sit there and do that, you know, it was, it was very time consuming. Uh, so a lot of sh shops did start working towards implementing the surface finish on Revo. Uh, but that was back with surface finish one, which which was kind of slow, not going to lie. Uh, but surface finish was <laughs> much faster because of that motorized C-axis. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It definitely uh, makes sense there. Um, and then I see we obviously uh, in the offline demo, not a whole lot we can dig in to show. Uh, but I do see there's also options in MODIS here for things like rotary tables uh, and even gear and spline. Yes. Um, so. Yes. Really, it seems like there's a lot of uh, high power options. You've shown us multiple uh, Demus code options for a lot of high level programming. Um, any other uh, comments that you have to say about the external features and that kind of thing of MODIS? 
Um, so your questions, like the different high level stuff. So the gear and spline, uh, I, I'm honestly going to say I haven't used, but I heard it uses uh, a third party package to actually do all the uh, gear analysis. And the third party is a, re is a reputable spline, gear and spline um, company that is what they do. So it's basically just send it to their software and it's done. Um, the rotary table is very simple to use. One line command, rotate table. Um, and then, yeah, because Demus is code based and it's all just text files, you know, I've done things in the past like, let's say I wanted to output the diameter of the bolt circle pattern on here. I could, and I have that option to select the different number of holes that I want to inspect. I could actually have Modus write a file to create the command to construct the center of the bolt hole and then call that. So that it gives you basically unlimited options to do what you need to do. That's great. That's great. And we saw you uh, earlier. The first thing in the demo was uh, you had essentially written an external program to call uh, a, a certain amount of bolt holes and that kind of thing. So the flexibility there uh, is almost endless as far as being able to utilize external programs and other subroutines and that kind of thing to really maximize the power of the Revo system and add that flexibility uh, within your manufacturing. Um, right. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to put all that together to show us and uh, show us how powerful of a tool Modus can be, uh, especially for the aerospace industry. That's uh, fantastic. For sure. All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to throw up the uh, last little screen here uh, just for the contact info. Um, we're pretty much out of time here, but please feel free to visit us on the web. Um, shoot me an email, shoot Ben an email, um, or email sales at wenzelamerica.com if you have anything you'd like to see more in Modus. Uh, any other questions about the SF-1210, Revo, or anything else in the Wenzel portfolio. And otherwise, thanks for joining us this afternoon, and have a great rest of your day and rest of the week. And thanks again, Ben, for taking the time and showing us around Modus. Much appreciated. No problem. All right, everybody, have a good day.